This is the city, Los Angeles, California. It has recently become the leading art center in the West. The Los Angeles County Art Museum. $20 million worth of concrete and steel. It's the largest museum built in the United States since 1941. La Cienega Boulevard is lined with private galleries representing every price in art. Some are for the public. Others require an appointment. But the pride of Los Angeles is the Watts Towers, built by Sam Rodia. It took him over 33 years. The towers are constructed of concrete, broken glass, and chips of stone. Sam Rodia was an Italian immigrant who wanted to do something for the United States because, as he said, there are nice people in this country. Mostly they are nice, but not always. Sometimes they can get mean. When they do, I go to work. I carry a badge. It was Thursday, April 4th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of Management Services Division. The boss is Captain Brown. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. We finished the shift at 5 p.m. At 6.52, we'd been called back to work. Bill got there before I did, and he knew what the emergency was all about. Earlier in the evening, in a city nearly 2,000 miles away, a visiting citizen had stepped out of his motel room for a breath of air. From a second-story balcony, he waved at some friends on the sidewalk below. A shot had been fired from across the street. The visitor went down. Within a matter of minutes, he was pronounced dead. His name? Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. They think somebody shot him from across the street. Chief wants the ECC open. That's why you're here. Mac, Sergeant Joe Friday, Bill Gannon. This is Earl McNevin. Mac will be your routing officer. Jenkins is out of town. I shanghaied Mac from Metro Division. Like I told the captain, this emergency control center is something new to me. Give him the word, Joe. I've got to run up and see the chief. Wait here for me. How long have you been on the job, Mac? Eight months. You know about the emergency control center, do you? I didn't even know we had one until 15 minutes ago. The ECC is located on the first floor of the building here. Now, in the event of a disaster or unusual occurrence, fire, flood, riot, civil disturbance, it functions as the department command post. In other words, unlike setting up one of the mobile command posts in the field, we use this one in the building. No, not quite, Mac. Think of it this way. The emergency control center is one big finger on the city's pulse. Now, everything that happens in Los Angeles, even down to the smallest incident, will be monitored here. If any patterns seem to be developing, they'll be checked out. I see. And by the same token, we don't want a simple rumor or an untoward minor incident to trigger deployment of men and equipment and thereby create a situation that might not have occurred if we'd been on top of it at the outset. Kind of works both ways for everybody's protection, but not to cause undue and unnecessary alarm. You got it. Sounds complicated. Been known to get that way. Joe, Bill, Captain around? He's upstairs with the chief. This is Earl McNevin, Metro Division. Sergeant Blakely, Intelligence. Well, it's Mac, no doubt, no doubt. What's the story back east, Andy? Oh, well, pretty bad. We're starting to show symptoms. A few windows smashes, a couple of arsons, nothing too big so far. Any crowds gathering? Funny thing about that. Yeah? The streets are practically deserted. Friday, Gannon. Chief says right now, get out the notifications. Yes, sir. You got the duty, Andy? Who else? Good, that's one division notified. Seven fifteen p.m. Thursday, April 4th. We alerted the rest of the duty crew and unlocked the emergency control center. I would function as executive officer. Bill was assigned to Inspector Hagen in press relations. Thanks, Bob. Reminds me of a military control center. It's organized along the same lines. Intelligence, personnel, procurement, communications. Now there's your slot, routing officer. Let's check the radio room. Now, you know the communication center down the hall? Yes, sir. All right, this is a backup. It's small, but it works. We operate on tactical alert frequencies. 
Punch a button, we can talk to anybody, anywhere. All patrol cars, all divisions, all police motorcycles and helicopters in the city. Joe, just talk to the captain. He's on his way. Right. Chief's in a meeting, one of a series he set up with community leaders, all groups. All lines of communication are open. Wide open. Emergency Control Center, Sergeant Friday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we're activating right now. I see. Well, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate your call. Yes, sir. We'll keep in touch. Disaster Control up at Sacramento. They're activating. Maybe it's good we are, too. What do you mean? Intelligence got a call 15 minutes ago from Metro. Some guy made a citizen's arrest, 180th and Broadway. 14-year-old boy had a Molotov cocktail in his pocket. Well, that's one that won't get thrown. Yeah, but the kid didn't seem to mind. Huh? He said a lot more would be tonight. Is he being checked out? All the way. Seven thirty p.m. Thursday, April fourth. The emergency control center was activated. Ready to brief? Yes, sir. Go. May I have your attention, please? Your attention, please. Now you all know what's happened. That's why we're here as a precautionary measure. Now just remember this. A lot of people in the department and out are doing their best to keep any disturbances from starting. Now, we can help. First, the chief wants no excessive show of force. Second, don't base any decisions on rumor. Some pretty wild ones are floating around right now. Check everything out before you act. And stay alert. That's about all I can tell you. Andy? What trouble we've had so far is mostly in patrol area 2, 77th Street University, Newton Street, Wilshire Divisions. Some rock throwing, fire bombings, but nothing major. Rumors we got. Lots of them. Most are burn threats. They're still coming in. Can you give us the conditions, Captain? Temperature, mid-80s. Humidity, 12 to 14 percent. Fire danger is very high. What's your department status, Bob? We've been on task force operations since the assassination. Personnel. Joe, the department's fully mobilized. Until further notice, all personnel will work A and B watches. 12 on, 12 off. Kind of tough on expecting fathers, though. Like who? Craig Naughty and Kennedy. How so? Anytime. Art. Last week, my cigars are getting stale. Anything else? A teletype's gone out to all divisions. We'll know available reserves by 8 o'clock. But Procurement? Running vehicle totals now. Give me a couple of minutes. Radio room. Open for business. Chief Houghton? You've said it all, Joe. Let's get to work. Yes, sir. Remember, Bill, who, what, when, and where? Yes, sir. Press relations, Gannon. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? 150. Yes, sir, we'll check on it. And thanks for calling us first. Yes, sir, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. 151. Kid, citizen called the TV station, claims they're running up her streets, smashing windows, turning over cars. Who'd you talk to? Phillips, Channel 12. He wants verification before they put it on the tube. Get intelligence on it. Yes, sir. Here's one for you, Andy. Control 9 to all units at 7.45 p.m. The ECC is operational. Control 9. Air 1 to Control 9. How do you read? Over. Control 9, you are loud and clear, Air 1. What is your position now? Over. This is Air 1. I'm hovering over 77th Division north of 52nd Street. Roger, Air 1. Gloria. Good evening, Joe. You want to check the time card? Right. Half of those are available reserves. If we need them, we can have them. Let's just hope we don't have to use them. Radio room. What do you got, Joe? I'm afraid this isn't for publication. Metro unit's got a car under observation. Eighth and Orchard, two men inside. Where's the scoop? The car's loaded with guns and ammunition. Bird dog this force, will you, Andy? Eight fifteen p.m. Metro had talked to the armed suspects. The unit reported to the ECC. Well, they had guns and ammunition, that's for sure. What's the story? A couple trap shooters on the way to a skeet club. Bill, on that report from the TV station? Yeah, what'd you find out? Rumor. 20 kids instead of 150. No cars overturned, no windows smashed, no damage. What were they doing? Walking home from baseball practice. a.m. Saturday, April 6th. 36 hours passed. We slept when we got the chance, in the cot room in the basement of the building. 
It was now nearly 40 hours since the assassination of Dr. King. Thanks, Captain. Yes, sir, not bad for a Friday night. I understand, sir, related to the incident. Right. Hollywood Division. How'd they do? One arson, one attempted arson, some broken windows, plus business as usual, of course. You want to fill me in? Yeah. You get any sleep down there? Well, pretty rough. You know how it is. People moving in and out most of the night. I didn't do much better at home. My wife was up all night with a toothache. Well, it looks like you hung a little wallpaper this morning. We took down more rumors than we put up. Yeah. We're running one down, three more get started. I can't figure the arsons. No pattern whatsoever. Well, that's good, isn't it? Better than that. Any new assaults? Let's see, you hit the sack about three. We had two cents connected with the incident here and here in Foothill Division. Foothill, my old stomping ground. What happened? The shootings, three suspects in custody, a couple militant groups. That's about it. Not the best Friday night, not the worst. Mm -hmm. What's the word from back east? Pretty bad. They've committed troops. Middle West looks bad, too. Gun, give me an educated guess. You think we'll stay quiet here? Hard to say, Joe. People got a lot of grief to work off. Yeah. You see how they're doing it in other parts of the country. Good morning, Joe. Andy? Well, I had a quiet night up north, Oakland, San Francisco. That's good. I don't like this, though. What's that? CHP called at 4.55 a.m. Several carloads of militants heading south all night on Interstate 5. Still coming. Joe? Yes, sir. Those marches this morning, the ones downtown? Two of them scheduled, aren't they? Right, in the silent vigil. Chief wants Air One to do a recon of the area. Yes, sir. Get it on the air. Twelve thirty p.m. Saturday, April 6th. The memorial marches were peaceful, including the one in the San Fernando Valley. Air One reported that the streets in downtown Los Angeles were quieter than usual. Look at this, Joe. Wife's tooth must have really been killing her. Nothing but lettuce in here. No meat. <laughs> Mayor's office on the phone. They want to know the situation back east. I'll take it. Gannon. Well, what's new with the expectant fathers? Look at them. I see what you mean. They're doing just what we are. Waiting. April 6th, 11.45 p.m. University Division reported a window smash burglary. Three male suspects were taken into custody. The target was a gun shop. Guns in this store and others in the area had already been removed by the store owners. Traffic detail for the Coliseum tomorrow. Memorial service. Andy, what's the crowd estimate for the Coliseum tomorrow? 20, 30,000. What about the service Monday? Well, we'll know better after tomorrow. This is 13 Victor 5 to Control 9. Uh, Central Area Situation Report, 11.46 p.m. Traffic light, slight pedestrian activity. 13, Victor 5, over. Control 9. So far, so good. So far. Better watch it, buddy. Sunday, April 7th, 5.55 a.m. I managed four hours sleep and, along with A-Watch, returned to duty in the ECC. Got a hall full of press out here. Everybody got hot coffee? There we go. How about some hot news? Here's the man. Good morning, gentlemen. Expect any trouble today at the Coliseum, Sergeant? We hope not. How many arrests have been made since the assassination? You know, connected with it. I'd have to check. Oh, serious stuff, I mean. Assaults, battery on a police officer, shootings, that kind of thing. The figure's lower than you'd think. You mean lower than normal for L.A.? That's right. Inspector Hagen has the numbers. It's hard to believe. What's it indicate, Joe? That the figure's lower than normal. Come on, Joe. Morning. <laughs> Boys giving you a hard time, Friday? No, sir. It's just that I don't have very much to tell him. Neither have I, except for the figures you've been talking about. Inspector Hagen. Hey, you get the figures Patience. How would you know? Where'd they book the 459? Over City. Two male adults, one female. What'd they hit? Gun place in Washington Boulevard. Big store. Weapons recovered? 50 handguns, 357 caliber. Outside of that, no problems. This is Air One to Control 9. I'm at the heliport, ready to go. Roger, Air One. Control 9. Please stand by. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Now, hold a minute. Can you hang on? Bill, you heard anything about a bunch of hippies supposed to march from Pershing Square to the Federal Building this morning? No, sir. No, nothing that we Come know on, of. Please. Have this posted, will you, Mac? 
Yes, sir. How do you like the duty by now? The hours are great. Well, don't let it bother you. Science tells us we spend too much of our lives in bed. Tell science I plan to spend the rest of mine there when we wrap up. Joe, anything on the silent vigil? That was it. 60 people on the steps of the federal building. Orderly crowd, no problem. If you get more information, let me know right now. Yeah, talk to him again, then back to me. Thanks, Al. I hope that's only a rumor. Sir? The Newton Division. Informant of theirs claims some young Middletons are planning to start trouble today in the Coliseum. Informant reliable? They think so. It's a memorial service, right? They'll have an altar and a choir and they'll pray. Even on a football field, it's still a memorial service. Yes, sir. Then I don't get it. What's that, Chief? Since when do hoodlums go to church? Executive Officer Sergeant Friday. Would you mind repeating that? I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Hello. Well, here we go. What do you got? Anonymous caller. Says a bomb has been planted in the Coliseum. Twelve fifty p.m. The Coliseum detail was on their way to the stadium. They were alerted to the bomb threat. Just talk to UPI. They got trouble all through the east. Shots fired, officer assaults. Bureau chief thought he better give us a call. How's that? Worst trouble they got began at a big memorial rally. And we've got two of them. Yeah. Today and tomorrow. Monday's observance would be held at Wrigley Field, a former minor league baseball park in Los Angeles. Services would be timed to coincide with the funeral of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Intelligence estimated the crowd at 12,000, but that was tomorrow. Today was our big concern. 12.55 p.m., Sunday, April 7th. It's here, mine's here. What'd you get, a boy or a girl? Got to ask. If there's a bomb out there, they can't find it. Command post open out there? Yes, sir. Half a block from the stadium, Lieutenant Clark's crew, University Division. Anything from there, one? He just called. No traffic yet to speak of. All right, it's one o'clock. You call Clark at the CP on TAC-1. Tell him I want a periodic status report starting at 2. Yes, sir. And one other thing. Sir. You tell him to keep looking for that bomb. For the next two hours, we waited. The city of Los Angeles took a deep breath and held it. Television cameras were focused on the disturbances in the eastern section of the country. The streets, the people, the faces, they all looked vaguely familiar. The riots and the rioters had a frightening sameness. Status report from Lieutenant Clark, Coliseum substation. Crowd is in the west end zone, still coming in. Parking lots partially filled. Streets around the Coliseum have no unusual traffic. Santa Barbara heavy, but not backed up. Over. Control 9, Roger. Thank you. How big's the crowd? Lieutenant Clark estimates about 20,000. Any incidents? No, sir. Not so far. I'd feel a lot better if it wasn't for that bomb threat. Sunday, April 7th, 3.05 p.m. Executive Officer Sergeant Friday. Yes, ma'am. It's perfectly safe to walk your dog. Yes, sir. You're quite welcome. Well, yes, sir. We'd appreciate it, but that's up to you. All right, sir. Let me see if I have this now. Your gun shop will be closed for the funeral tomorrow. All right, sir. Thanks very much for letting us know. Executive Officer Sergeant Friday. 
Yes, sir. Hang on a minute. I'll give you press relations. AP on two. Will you pick it up? Yeah, take this one on three, will you, Joe? What is it? Another bomb in the Coliseum set to go off during the services. Anonymous caller. Not this time. Here's her name and address. Now, this is Sergeant Friday. Yes. I see. You're sure of that, are you? Uh, all right. The woman sounded rational. She'd been informed of the bomb by her minister. He'd received a call the night before warning him not to attend the memorial services. Intelligence took over. DHQ was notified. So was Clark at the Coliseum substation. Another bomb search was begun quietly and quickly. 3.20 p.m. Officers in Unit 3Z10 located the minister at his home. What'd they have to say? Well, the minister's informant didn't tell him much. They never do. No, no location, no definite time. Could be another crank. Or he could mean business. At 3.41 p.m., a third bomb threat was received. The caller refused to identify himself. A half hour passed, then an hour. 4.41 p.m. You talk to the CP out of the Coliseum? Yes, sir. The services are almost over. Any problems? No, sir. Lieutenant Clark says it's quiet. Good. Now, here, read this loud so everybody can hear it. Now, everybody give fire to your attention for a minute. It's a message from communications. Number of requests for police services running below normal. City well covered. Units responding rapidly. Major crime calls well below normal. Feel better? I feel like a cup of coffee. I'll get you one. For the last three and a half days, I've been living on it. I'll pass. All right, sir. I'm still living on it. How's Eileen? You had a chance to call her? Yeah, I just did. Funny thing. How is she? Wasn't her teeth after all. Oh? Tonsils. She never had them out. Where's all your boys? Press. Over at the Coliseum. Where else? You can have that news business. I couldn't take it. Is that right? Sure, the way those guys work. Always on the go. Never at home. Working weekends. Sticking their necks out. Believe me, pal. There's a better way to live. And you found it. Yes, sir. At 6.10 p.m., the Coliseum was deserted. Traffic was moving freely throughout the area. Clark and his details secured. Nothing had gone off but the service itself. No bullets, no bombs, no riot. Well, Joe, looks pretty good, doesn't it? I'm not sure. The funeral's tomorrow. They've had some trouble up north. That's getting pretty close to home. Yes, sir. I wish it were over with, but I guess everybody does. I know one. Who? Mrs. King. Turned out to be three drunks in an alley, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Mac, your armband, please. Oh, I'm sorry I'm new here. Good night, man. Joe, tell me something. The last few days, they've had riots all over the country. Why haven't we had one here? A lot of reasons, I guess. Give me the most important. All right, I'll try. People in Los Angeles don't want a riot. Okay, but why? Maybe they're too busy. Doing what? Honoring a friend. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. was buried on Monday, April 8, 1968. Los Angeles was quiet. On the day of the funeral, and for several days after, rioting continued in a number of U.S. cities. Los Angeles was quiet.